Let's take a look at the flow of accounting data. These four steps represent the first four steps of getting the data into the financial statements. The first step is that a transaction occurs. You all know what a transaction is. Once a transaction occurs, we analyze the transaction. And once the transaction is analyzed, we enter it in the journal. We don't know about the journal yet, but we'll talk about it in a minute. And finally, the amounts are posted to the ledger accounts. The ledger accounts are the T accounts that I have been showing you in the uh, earlier sections. The third step was to record the transactions in the journal. The journal is simply a book or a place where you have all the transactions recorded in chronological order. Chronological means by date. So if a transaction happens on January 1st, you record that transaction first, then the second January transaction, then the third January transaction, and so on and so forth. The journal is the first book of entry. Whenever a transaction occurs, the first place it gets recorded is in the journal. You do follow three steps to record transactions in the journal. First, we need to identify each account affected by the transaction and classify it by type. So the type would be whether it's an asset account, whether it's a liability account, and so on. Next, we determine whether each account is increased or decreased. And then we use our debit credit rules to record those transactions in the journal. Now, I taught you the debit and credit rules before earlier in a section. What you saw was not the journal. A journal entry has a different format. You use the same debit credit rules that you learned, but you have to first record it in the journal using a journal entry. Let me show you the journal entry format next. This is the format of a journal entry. The example we're going to use is that a company issued stock for $50,000 cash on April 2nd. This is a transaction. The first step we need to do is identify which accounts are affected by this transaction. You know that the two accounts affected are stock, common stock, and cash. Now, what are the two types? Cash is an asset and common stock is owner's equity. Next, which items are increased, which type is decreased? Cash is increased by 50,000. So it's stock, common stock. Common stock is also increased by 50,000. Now you follow your debit credit rules to record your journal. The format of a journal entry is, first, there's a column for the date. So here it took place on April 2nd. Next you have the name of the accounts and the explanation. You, in a journal entry, you always list your debit first. So the debit side goes first. You know that cash was an asset. The normal balance of cash is on the debit side. So since our cash increased by 50,000, the cash has to go on the debit side. So you put cash first, and then you put the 50,000 in a debit column. You have to have an equal and opposite reaction, which means we have common stock. Common stock gets credited by 50,000. If you follow your debit credit rules, that would still apply. Common stock is an owner's equity item. Owner's equity increased by 50,000. Owner's equity is credit side normal balance. Therefore, we would credit common stock for 50,000. Finally, you have an explanation of your journal entry. The reason we received this 50,000 is because we issued common stock. Again, to summarize, the journal is where we enter each transaction as it happens in a chronological order. Once all the journal entries are entered in the journal, periodically they get posted to the ledger. Let's go look at what the ledger is. The ledger is simply a collection of all your T accounts. Remember the T accounts that we talked about where I showed you the debit credit rules? 
those accounts are in the ledger. The ledger is a book that holds all the company's accounts. So the ledger will have a page for the cash account. So all the cash transactions will show up in the ledger. The ledger is what we show visually using T accounts. Now, a lot of companies don't use these manual journals and ledgers anymore. They used to do that maybe 25, 30 years ago, but now you get computerized accounting programs, but you still have to use a journal entry. To, that's your first place that you would enter all your transactions. You would enter your journal entries chronologically, and then since it's a computerized program, it automatically gets posted to the ledger. Let's look at the posting. Posting simply means copying information from the journal to the ledger. So you hear it, that you've seen your journal entry. When we post it to the ledger, all we're doing it is we're taking the debit, 50,000 cash, and putting it into our ledger as a debit balance for cash. We see that our journal entry has a 50,000 credit for common stock. So we take 50,000 and credit it into our common stock in our ledger. We're just copying information from one book to the other. The journal and the ledger give you different information. For example, if you wanted to find out how much is your cash balance, you would go to the ledger because all the cash transactions are listed in one place in the ledger. If you go to the journal and try to find out what your cash balance is, you would have to go through your entire journal, every single transaction, pick out the cash entries, add and subtract them to figure out, and it's a big hassle, whereas the ledger has it all recorded in one place. Now, if you wanted to find out what transactions that occurred on April 15th, the ledger would have them all over the place, all over in different accounts, but if you go to the journal, all you would have to do is look chronologically, turn the page to page 15, April 15th, and you would have all the transactions that occurred on that date. So the two books, the journal and the ledger, give different information. The journal is the first book of entry. So we always record all our transactions first in the journal, then they get posted to the ledger. Both have debits, credits, both have the same account names. However, they give different information. They provide us with different information. Again, the first steps of the accounting cycle is transaction occurs, a transaction is analyzed, a transaction is entered in the journal, and then we post those amounts from the journal to the ledger accounts. Remember the T accounts that we look at are the ledger accounts.